There is some things to consider and here now to talk more about toy safety this holiday season is Dr. Mitchell Goldman with UCSD. Dr. G, thanks for being here. Great to be here, Kathleen. Well, with each new crop of toys that come out year after year, there's new things to watch out for. What is uh, on your radar this year in terms of hazards when it comes to toys? Well, there's a number of things on the radar, but the biggest thing is just the old standbys. The old standbys are kids that choke and most of the injuries with toys occur in young kids that choke and so if you're giving a, a toy to someone who's under the age of two you have to make sure they're not going to put it in their mouth and the classic one is something like this it's like a toy like this that was actually given to my 11 month old grandmother to uh, granddaughter today and you know they take these things out and all of a sudden, all these little beads come out, and boy, it was really quick action to prevent her from choking. So choking is the number one thing for the young kids, so small toys. For older kids, it's going to be things like scooters, because they tend to do scooters and they will fall off and, of course, break some bones here and there. But also projectiles. So Toys, toys that are causing projectiles, whether it's little balls or wings or something of this sort, also are going to damage the eyes. And as you said, almost every three minutes, another kid is taken to an emergency room with an in toy related injury. That's an extraordinary uh, statistic to think about as we head into the holiday season. It's also, though, what we don't see that can be harmful. What are some of the chemicals uh, from a doctor's point of view that could be in toys that could cause problems? Yeah, great comment. Essentially, lead is the big one. You know, lead is found in many different paints and also in lots of plastics. And so when kids are putting things in their mouth, they're going to get some of the lead, especially if it's been decomposed in the sun. You can see other things like chromium um, can be another chemical. Now, when we pass down toys from generation to generation, some of the older toys actually contain lead paint. And so you want to make sure those aren't in. But the last ones on the bottom are really very important magnets and batteries things that have small magnets if they're swallowed they can actually do a lot of harm in the stomach and batteries can actually corrode part of the stomach so you want to make sure that kids are not swallowing things in the toys well when it comes to lead and chromium are there any government regulations that would insist on labeling or, or is there something that parents said that would tip parents off that some of these toys could contain those well things? you know Kathleen there are government regulations. The problem is they're not always followed. And when people are buying inexpensive toys, especially from China, sometimes they bypass those regulations. And some of the paints or colorings, especially in the plastics, can contain lead or chromium. And that's not a good thing. And what are some of your general tips for parents uh, as we leave this interview and head into the holiday season that they should have on top of mind when they're in the toy aisle? Well, most important thing is if you're buying toys for a young kid that's going to stick everything in their mouth, make sure it's not something that they can choke on. And if there's a electronic toys with batteries or with magnets in it, make sure they're not easily removed because then they can go in the in the mouth. That's right. Maybe do some toy testing of your own before sure. you hand it over. All right. Some good things to keep in mind. Thank you so much, Dr. G. Happy holidays. Same to you.